Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today I'm going to talk about D365 performance logs. In the last article and video, I talked about custom logs and how you can record information in more complex processes to gain understanding on what happened and potentially make improvements when something goes wrong. Um, taking that concept a little bit further, you can also track how much time has elapsed between various calls in code and really understand if a process is taking a really long time or it's taking a long time this particular run, which method, which area within the code caused that process to run longer and save that information off and even view it in a workbench later so you can have that greater insight. Certainly there's some trace parsing and other ways to get this information, but this is a way where you can keep that information a little bit more long term. So let's jump in. First, it's important to understand what are the different ways that we can track time in X++ code in Microsoft Dynamics um, for uh, 365 for finance and operations, right? Um, so there's a couple different methods. There's a time now, there's a win API method, there's also a .NET method. So I wrote a quick runnable job called test time trackers to kind of show us what are the differences and what happens when we run these different ways of tracking time. So let's look at each one of these methods and then we can go from there. So this first one is we can use a global function called time now. So we don't have to give it the name of the class, colon, colon at the front. It's part of the global um, class. So we can just call this method from anywhere in our code. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to return the number of seconds since midnight and return that as an integer that we can store off into something called start time. Then, you know, we can pretend that we've run some process. In this case, I'm just calling sleep to simulate a process as run. I'm sleeping for 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds. Then we can call time now again and get that out. In theory, right, this is going to be five seconds later. And then finally, we can uh, use the info method to print out how many seconds have elapsed. I could do that through subtracting right the end time integer from the start time but there is actually this cool other global function called time consumed that will take those two values and print out how many seconds or minutes or hours so it kind of does the the work for you of you know dividing by 60 for how many minutes etc um, to print out a, a little bit of a nicer message we're not going to see it in this example because it's just five seconds but if more time had elapsed this would be pretty useful so this is how time now works time now is really useful unfortunately the accuracy is only up to seconds so it's maybe not going to help Help you for fine-tuning some really small piece of code um, that you're testing. So what's another way of testing performance? We can actually use this win API class and a method called get tick count 64 to get out how many milliseconds have passed from a certain start time. And then we do the same thing. We simulate a process running called get tick count again 5,000 milliseconds later and then see if we get that 5,000 print it out like we would expect it to. Um, this is a good way that I've used many times. I do think when API is maybe an older function that may not always be supported in all servers, so it may not be your best option going forward, but wanted to show you that. Finally, there's another third option, and I'm sure there's more than just this, but these are three I wanted to share, where we can actually use the .NET function in class called stopwatch. And if we use stopwatch and call start, we run our process, call stop, and then call this method on our stopwatch class called get elapsed milliseconds, we can get how many milliseconds have elapsed. And this is actually really accurate. So this is a runnable job. I've right clicked and said um, set a startup object. I could then click start, but I've actually already done that in 
um, another browser here. So I should be able to just click reload on this. It'll run that same test time tracker and we can see those info logs that are printed out and see how those different ways of tracking times working. If you remember, it should be taking five seconds per each one of these calls. So overall, this call will take about 15 seconds. Sure enough, it's done. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom because this first message is the one that comes out first. So testing the time trackers, testing time now, and then time elapse with time now, five seconds. All right, so pretty good, good for getting you know seconds out. So what about the Win API get tick count? If we call that, I can see it took um, 5,002 milliseconds to run it. So pretty good, you know, maybe a little bit more accurate, maybe um, with some of the overhead of printing out, maybe that's the difference. And then if we test with stopwatch, it's printing out and saying this took exactly 5,000 milliseconds. So either way, pretty good. Um, this kind of demonstrates how we have these different functions. Well, what if we made that a little bit more practical? So I wanna show you what I've done with it here. In, again, our last video I covered custom logs. We basically showed how you can have a transaction workbench, maybe a staging table from an integration. I've written a lot of these where you have a sales order that maybe comes from an external system and you need to put it in a staging table. And then you have a batch job that really processed that staging record creates a sales order and completes it. There's a lot of processes involved, a lot of areas where you may want to time and see the performance of what's happening with that batch job. And so with the code we've added, we can store messages and now performance as well into some logs and see the results in a related table and form and really analyze this. We can then later take these out. You know, we don't have to save them long term, but they can be really helpful as we're getting started, as we know maybe the data that's coming in can really vary. So let's look at how we do that. First, within this custom log table, we've added, you know, these different fields. You probably saw most of them in the last video. I won't go over all of the details, but we basically have an integer for seconds since the beginning of this process, seconds since the last call to this log, and then just seconds overall. This is something that I've really come up with that I think is helpful. You don't have to do it exactly this way. This isn't like a, a set um, format that Microsoft specifies, but I find it really helpful anyway. So we've got these different fields for storing how many seconds have passed, and then we can add code in um, behind of this table. And we've got, you know, from last lessons, our way to log a message, which is really just inserting the message along with what record this came from. And then we can log and even print out the message using an info code if we want that. Well, we can take this even further and call this log performance. And this one's a little bit complicated. Again, you don't have to make it this complicated, but I find it can be really useful useful if you're troubleshooting performance. So it's still going to save off the message and which record it's related to, but it's also going to store how many seconds have passed. And again, we could use time now, we could use one of the others to really get milliseconds. In this example, I'm using time now. After that, I'm really looking for, hey, do we have another message? Can we find the most recent message? We're ordering by created date time. Can we find the most recent message that has been logged for this same record? And if there is, let's get the difference in time between you know the current record right now and the last record and store that off. This will make more sense later, but we wanna know how many seconds have occurred since the last message. Similarly, and additionally, we, this is really optional, but you could store a message just called begin. And with that, you could count how many seconds have elapsed since the very beginning of this process um, and store that off in another column as well. And then finally, we can optionally print that out as well as insert there. So what does that actually look like in code? 
Well, let's again pretend we've got a workbench form here. We've got our grid that you've seen already of our transaction and our grid of the logs. Well, I added a third button here um, called process and track performance. So that's this button right here. I next overrode the clicked method by right clicking methods override clicked. It created this method here. And now if I want to view code, I can look at what's in this button push. And so this is an example of how you could use it for your own process, or you could put it in a batch job, any, anything like that. But essentially I'm calling this begin to basically save off or tell my system, hey, this is the beginning of my process. I want you to track how many seconds have elapsed total across this whole thing, as well as how many seconds have occurred and elapsed between each call. So next, I'm gonna call log performance several different times. Basically, um, between each maybe major method call, I could also call it deeper down, um, as many times as I want. And basically, I do this to try to understand how, wh where is the time being taken? So here I call it, I'm saying I'm starting the process. So really, there shouldn't be any time elapsed so far. But then I'm simulating, I don't know, maybe I'm inserting the sales order header, and I want to track how long that takes. So I can call log performance and do this work here to see how much time has passed. And then I can simulate another process. Maybe I'm inserting a bunch of sales lines and I wanna call log performance again and see how long that took. Now maybe I'm invoicing the sales order. Again, I can repeat this as many times as I want. And then in my case, I'm gonna refresh um, the custom log. I'm gonna call execute query so that it refreshes and I can see the results. So let's see what that looks like. I've got an example right here where I just ran. I created a new record. I clicked the process and track performance button. It actually printed out all of the messages as it ran those two things, but then it also put the logs in this logging table that I join back to the main record so I can really see what happened. So I can see my beginning record. I can see my next message, which happened right afterwards, so no time has elapsed. But then after that, after this first completion has occurred, I can see that five seconds have occurred since the very last message. Then when I call finally my last message, I can see that, okay, eight, eight seconds have elapsed all total for this entire process, but three seconds have elapsed since the last time I called message. Again, you know, you can use this how you want, you can make it your own, but I have found this is very useful. So what's an example of maybe where you would use it? Maybe you've got some code that is a while select method and you wanna put a message, one of these performance logs around that while select and really time how long is that while select happening because while selects can be really slow. And then maybe as you're looking at the code and you see that the while select is taking the majority of the time for this process, you can look at the where clause of the while select and see that perhaps it's missing an index and you need to add an index to that table. So remember that's gonna be done if we open, I don't know, a transaction table, there's these indexes here. If I'm looping through transaction table and I don't have an index, that could be problematic um, if I've got a, a filter on that. So maybe I add the index then I run the process again, and because I have these logs and I've saved them off, I can see the difference and see, oh wow, that made a huge improvement. Now instead of maybe taking minutes or even hours, that process can take you know far, far shorter. Um, so I've used this many, many times to improve the performance of code. I hope it's useful for you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.